Hey there, Nick Genetakis here. In this video, we're gonna go over how to reclaim a ton of disk space if you happen to be using Docker Desktop along with WSL2. So back in May 2020, I did create that one gotchas video with WSL2 around reclaiming disk space and memory usage, and all of that still applies today. But in that video, I forgot to do something really important because I only discovered this today. So I noticed that on my primary SSD, I was slowly losing disk space. And even after vacuuming up the VM file for WSL2, I just wasn't reclaiming any space. And as it turns out, you do need to vacuum the Docker desktop VM as well to reclaim that space. So that's what we're going to do in this video. But before we start doing that, there are some commands that you might wanna run on the Docker side of things, just to make sure that you reclaim a lot of space. So you can run a Docker system prune here, which is going to delete all dangling images here. And that's really going to be the bulk of reclaiming a lot of space. It also, you know, removes some other things as well, like stop containers, et cetera, et cetera. But you know, if you've been using Docker for, I don't know, a year and you haven't ran this command in quite some time, you'll probably end up getting a couple of gigs back just from the dangling images. Now, the prune command also supports running other flags as well. For example, you can do dash dash all, which is going to remove all unused images. And, uh, you know, with Docker, it's pretty interesting because if you remove all of these images from your system, you can always just rebuild your stuff to get it back to normal, right? Uh, so this is actually a really good command, in my opinion, to run on a dev box every once in a while, maybe like once a year. And this is really going to give you a massive result in terms of disk space, right? Because uh, if you have hundreds or maybe thousands of images just sitting there, uh, if you delete all of them, yeah, you're going to get a lot back. So for example, you can also run a Docker info to see how many images you have. Now, I ran this command or, you know, all this uh, purging and pruning and uh, shrinking and vacuuming, you know, before this video. But before I did this, you can see here I have images 29 because I've built a couple of things since then for some projects I'm working on. But this number was 1800 before. So I just had 1800 images or I don't know exactly how it's calculated. It's not like top level images, maybe like layers within images. But yeah, there was a lot. And uh, I reclaimed uh, a ton of space when I did a Docker system prune dash dash all, which got rid of all the images, right? Because uh, if you are a web developer, let's say you're a Python developer, right? You might have something like Python 3.6, 3.7. 3.8, 3.9, 3.10. If you're a Ruby developer, you know, 2.7, 3.0, like you just might have a whole bunch of ton of old uh, images just sitting there not doing anything. And if you have some legacy apps that are still using those versions, that's no problem, right? Uh, after doing this prune all, you can just rebuild your images and then they'll be back to uh, back to normal and as good to go. So what you might want to do to begin with is to run a Docker system prune all, uh, depending on how much it needs to do, uh, that could finish running in a couple of seconds, maybe a couple of minutes. So that is step one. Then step two is to shrink the file for uh, Docker Desktop's VM. And for that, we actually do need to launch our terminal as the admin user. So, you know, my terminal icons over here, I'm just gonna right click that. And instead of launching the Windows terminal like this one, and if you're not using the Windows terminal, you can do the same steps for PowerShell. You can just right click that and open as admin. Screen's gonna go black. I'm gonna hit yes to that one. And again, you can also just run something like PowerShell like this and uh, right click that and also run as admin. If you're not using the Microsoft terminal, that should be no problem. So now that we have an admin terminal, Terminal open, we can just launch PowerShell like this. And let me just zoom in again. And uh, the first thing we need to do is shut down WSL. So you wanna close this tab here if you happen to be using the Microsoft terminal. And then there is some command here, wsl.exe with a shutdown flag. So let's run that together here. And that is going to completely shut down WSL. You can see this notification popped up and Docker is like, yo, I just stopped unexpectedly. Do you wanna restart this? No, I'd rather not. You know, we'll do this on our own time here. And you know, I'm not gonna repeat all the steps that were taken in the other video around uh, shrinking this because they're the same steps. But in this case though, it's really important that we go to this specific directory. Now, in my case here, you know, it says users Nick, you don't wanna replace Nick with your directory, but you know, in this app data, local Docker WSL data, this is where the file is that we need to shrink. So if I do a DIR here, we can see here's the ext4, you know, VM file, and it is pretty big, right? This is the one that we are going to shrink. And uh, is there a clear command inside of here? Yes, nice, because I don't use PowerShell that often. Uh, another command that we need to run now is this command here. Let me also zoom out a little bit just so it's all on one line, a little bit easier to read. And this is the command that we're going to run to shrink that file we just took a look at in the DIR. Now keep in mind this optimize VHD command, as far as I understand, only works if you happen to be using uh, the pro edition, maybe even the enterprise edition of Windows. Uh, if you're using the home edition or something else, this command is not available. So in that other video I created, I went over some links and details on how to run that on home. And there's some great comments there as well because it turns out there's a couple different ways to do that. So you might wanna check that out if you happen to be using the home edition of Windows. You know, I'll try to throw up something right now on this 
the screen for Windows users. Hopefully that command works. If not, then you know you can always check the link in the description to go back to that other video. But yes, after we run this command here, you know it's going to compact this virtual disk. It doesn't really take too long. It should take maybe, I don't know, 30 seconds, maybe a little bit less. Again, it's going to depend on what type of disk you have. Right, SSD is going to be a little bit faster. Of course, it's taking a long time now because uh, I'm recording this video. I really don't remember it taking this long before. Uh, but let's see how long I can ramble here. There we go. So it didn't take that long. So now we just shrunk that file, uh, which is really good. So we can close this admin terminal now. We can go to our system tray here. Uh, I think my face might be blocking that, but I'm just going to, you know, right click the Docker icon and just go to restart here. I think you can see it a little bit there. So Docker is going to start. Yes, fine. Let's do it up. And we can see Docker is going to restart. There's a little notification there, not super important. But now we can just run our regular terminal here that's going to launch WSL2 uh, here. And, you know, this is WSL2 running, right? Everything is good to go. You can see Docker desktop notification just came up. You can, you can see the little edge of that. But now if I run a Docker info here, you know, since I didn't run the prune command, nothing is going to change. I'm still going to have the 29 here. But in your case, if you ran the prune command, especially with a dash all flag, that number is going to go way down. And if you go and check your disk space, I would imagine it's going to be a lot, lot higher, which is uh, going to be great. So like, for example, if I open up my Windows Explorer here, ignore this red scary one here, this uh, disk space issue is a whole nother problem, but this is where everything is installed on my primary drive here for the SSD. You know, I was down to just under 50 gigs, like 48 gigs, and suddenly I'm back up to 100 here, which I am very happy with. So that's it. Uh, that's all you have to do here to shrink your Docker desktop VM file, and hopefully you will reclaim a lot of space. With that said, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up because it helps a lot. And uh, if you have any questions, I'll do my best to answer them in the comments below, so feel free to ask away. On that note, thanks a lot for watching, and I will see you in the next video.